one of the top quarterbacks in the program's history. As Nate Stefanski back to receive the kick to start the quarter. He takes it up the middle, carries it past the 25, up to about the 28-yard line, and that is where Case Western Reserve will begin the second half of play. Correction, that was Chase Witte on the return there. Chase Witte with the return up to the 28-yard line. So Saxton back under center here. He'll start the half with three receivers, two spread to his right. Colt Morgan, one-on-one -on, -one on the left side. Two running backs, Tarkovsky and Jenkins. Jenkins takes the handoff, runs it up the middle, carries it past the 35 to the 37. They'll call it the 36, and that will bring up a second down and two for Case Western Reserve. Uh, Jenkins had one carry in the first in the first half, fumbled it, and we didn't see him after that, at least not on a carry, but gets a quick second carry here, takes it past the 38-yard line, which was the first down marker, all the way up to the 39, and two carries and a first down for Sam Jenkins. They'll spot the ball at the 40. First and 10 from the 40. The fans settle back into their seats for the second half of the game. Saxton gives off and tackled behind the line of scrimmage is Jenkins. So a couple quick runs here. Jenkins tackled and he'll check out of the game. Zach Hall comes in. Mario Robina in as well as a fourth wide receiver. So now four wide, Hall the lone back. Robina and Morgan at the bottom of your screen. It's Spitali and DeFrancesco at the top. Snap comes. Saxton set to throw over the middle. Spitali has it. He's still going. Still going. Still going. And finally wrestled down at the 37-yard line for a big game. Joey Spitali. Showing some gumption on that one. Made a nice catch, avoided some tackles, and refused to go down. Got about an extra 10 yards on that one. Saxton takes a snap, throws out near side. That's DeFrancesco who will carry it for a gain of seven. So the passing offense at its finest today here for Case Western Reserve. The Spartans this season have averaged about 345 passing yards per game. They're right at about that mark right now. Saxton. Pass rush comes from the outside. It's a handoff. Taking it to the outside is Jenkins. Jenkins avoids a defender. Finally swallowed up inside the 30. Combining on the tackle there is Mike Turner Jr. And Caleb Collins. So third down and one. We'll see if Case Western Reserve can convert here. Saxton looks over the sideline. A little movement on the line, and I think that's going to be a false start. Let's see who this one goes against. Well, the referees decide this one. Happy to be joined in the booth by Dan Whalen. How you doing? Hey, Dan. Good to see you, as always. Neutral zone infraction, number 95, offense. So that will go That's against five yard penalty, still first down. That will go against the defense here. So a first down, the easy way for Case Western Reserve. And Dan, uh, welcome once again, and congratulations again on the honor today. Teams getting inducted. You know, as great as you were, Greg Deblak told me the other day that he thought Drew was one of the best he's ever coached. Does that make you a little jealous at all, or is that uh... <laughs> not at all? I think uh, <laughs> Drew has all the tools to to be the best, not just one of. Um, 
I've been watching him here the past few weeks, and really impressive kid. Oh, you see him drop back there, and right as we're talking, he throws a touchdown. And so. another one to Cole Morgan, and that will be the school record 16th touchdown catch of the season for Colt Morgan. It is the fourth touchdown pass of the day for Drew Saxton, and that's going to make it a 30 to nothing lead for Case Western Reserve. And boy, Colt Morgan, I got to imagine, we'll get back to Drew Saxton here in a sec, but Colt Morgan has to be the kind of guy you look at a receiver like that, size, speed. I see a little smile on your face here. You would probably love to throw that guy like that a bunch. You know, you? I hadn't been following the stats too much, but to hear you say 16 touchdowns, is that right? Yep, 16. Through, through five and a half games, it's. Uh, that's pretty ridiculous. The extra point is blocked, and so that won't be good. It's the first time this season that Albrecht has missed an extra point. He's had plenty of those to try, too. So the score stays at 30 to nothing as we move along with 11-15 remaining. Again, I'm joined in the press box here by Dan Whalen as we take another look at that touchdown. Um, the connection that you can have with a wide receiver, clearly these two have found it, Saxton yeah. and, and Morgan. Seems that way. I mean... It, what is that like when you're when you're a quarterback? You know you have the guy you can, can rely on. You get into that mode. How important is that to have that guy out there that you know you can throw the ball to? Oh, it's it's really important. And luckily, you know, it's been nine or ten ten years now. Looking back at it, but uh, which is scary. Uh, but you know, we had three or four guys, and and we had played pretty much all the way through for four seasons. So you're able to establish a lot of rhythm. You can kind of just make connections with guys. Uh, you know with your eyes as opposed to having to talk through things. And, and after a while, you just know where guys are going to be. You know how quickly they can get to certain points. Um, you know where you, you can throw the ball, you know, place it to where they have the best chance to go get it. And, um, you know, these guys seem to be clicking on all fronts. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about your teams here as well. But um, you said you watched a little bit of Drew Saxon. Is this one returned by St. Vincent? Carried up past the 20 to the 23-yard line by Nowicki, and that's where the Bearcats will begin their drive. You mentioned you've been watching Drew Saxton. Do you – is there any – like, do you compare him to yourself? Do you see things in yourself that you see in, in him now? Is, is he a different quarterback than you where I never had the privilege to watch you play here? Yeah, but. you know, everybody plays a little bit different style of ball. Um, I, I see flashes of, you know, similar styles. I don't, I don't know that I would – compare our games too much, but, you know, he's got, first and foremost, you know, arm talent. He can throw the ball um, with, with the best at this level, and he's, you know, been playing half a, half of, of, of a season thus far. Yeah. So things are, are looking really, really strong for, for the next few years here um, at the quarterback position. Navarro wrapped up on that one by Cameron Brown. He fumbles. The ball is picked up by Austin, who will carry it all the way forward to about the 25-yard line for about a gain of one. But another nice strip sack there by Cameron Brown, who is just a beast on the defensive line as we take another look at that one. And boy, Brown got the big paw right in there and knocked that one loose. And St. Vincent was fortunate that, yeah, right hey, place, they didn't right turn time. it over. Yeah, the guy was right there to move it forward. Um, the challenges of starting a quarterback, because it's something you did, Ch starting at quarterback at this level as a freshman and pretty much straight from the onset, that's something that Saxton did and something yeah. that you did as well. I think you started the second game of your career, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, I uh, came in at halftime the first week, and then from there it was uh, off to the races. Another fumble, and again recovered by St. Vincent. Stasco picks this one up, and again with Xavier Thompson, no longer in the game. I think we're starting to see some challenges here for Navarro. Who That was Big Ian Henderson who got the hand on that one. And again, St. Vincent Lucky, they fumbled two times to start this drive. They've recovered both and turned them into short gains. It'll be a third down, actually third down and 11 here. That one's for a little bit of a loss. Yeah. You know, but but going back to your question, the the there there is, you know, there's some growth that has to take place. You know, I think just coming from high school straight to the next level, um, to start your first game it's an impressive feat in itself to, to pick up all the new offense and everything in a few short weeks in the month of august so um the fact he's able to do that and have so much success thus far like he's he's really uh you know meant to do it and, and was ready to step in from day one is pretty impressive defense swarms now be short of a first down st vincent forced to punt once again so uh, going back to your teams a little bit let's sure. it's obviously you know, one of the greatest, if not the greatest period right now, football and program history. And then 
you know, for you guys, what made those teams so special? Obviously talent, but, you know, what, what made you guys bond? Because even a day like today, I know you all come out, you're all here. Yeah. It sounds like yeah. you're still close. Um, we are, and I think it's unique. I mean, having success helps, uh, you know, guys stay closer together and what we accomplish as a team, as, as a unit. Uh, but, you know, quite frankly, we, we just put in a lot of time. You, you, you spend not just practice hours and game days with, with these guys. You live with them, and, and you spend the better part of four years – um, living, eating, breathing, everything about you know your team and, and you, the brotherhood that you form, and it's 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 actually pretty easy over time to just um, kind of get lost in that and 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 build relationships, and that translates onto the field. Obviously, not everybody um, you know has the success that we had, but I think we just kind of bought in from an early early uh, early point in our careers. We had great coaching. Uh, I mean, I can't say enough about the way Coach Debs and and the, the squad have have built a true program uh, across the board over the last 15 years, but it seems like to say that 15 years already is kind of wild. But, um, you know, things just continue to get better and continue to grow and continue to, to become uh, stronger here for, for Case football. Coolidge in a quarterback as Case Western Reserve begins the possession at the 33-yard line. It's a handoff to Jenkins, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage before he's wrestled down. Well, it, it's interesting because – you know, we spoke about this a little with, with Coach Debelak, but for the first time in program history, the team got to 500 all time as a record a couple of weeks ago. They're probably going to get back there today, assuming they hold on for the win. Um, you mentioned 15 years. It's been a long time, mm -hmm. and really it took 15 mm -hmm. years of su sustained success yeah. to get there. But you guys were kind of the first group that really had those breakout years for the mm -hmm. team there. Mm -hmm. Was there a feeling of when you guys were playing of kind of being – trailblazers to a certain extent that you guys were kind of setting the tone for the team going forward at that point? You know, it kind of picked up momentum over over time. I don't think anyone knew what we were going to be until about midway through my sophomore year, the 2007 season. Uh, 2006, we'd had, you know, kind of a, a mixed bag up and down, five and five, and really never got the wheels turning. We saw flashes of, of success, but could never, could never consistently deliver that for that season. And then all of a sudden, going into the second year of, of our class, it was uh, very, very easy to see growth. And all of a sudden, we rattle off four or five, six wins in a row. And you're like, hmm, we're on the verge of something. And then the playoff conversation starts. And then we Neutral squeak in, and then you have a home game. Defense, um, five-yard penalty. So those things start to Still build down. Uh, confidence. And then before you know it, you, you almost turn into a machine and, and you don't expect you go into every game expecting to win and losing is becomes unacceptable so uh, it kind of develops on its own over time and then now looking back on it you're like yeah it's it's nice to kind of look at it and say hey we, we accomplished something and now other teams can can play off of and, and use to grow as well and i'm joined by dan whalen here probably the greatest quarterback in program history i think safe to say here certainly among a group of very good quarterbacks who played here over the course oh, of the last 10 years. And um, tonight, you know, that team is getting inducted, or, well, getting, I should say, receiving the University Award for Athletic Excellence here. And, um, you know, an opportunity to recognize the team and really the first probably opportunity that there will be, considering mm -hmm. that you're going to be a number of Hall of Famers coming off of there, yeah. I'm sure. Um, do, you, you mentioned the 15 years went quick, but does it feel like like it's been what now? I guess eight years, nine years since you've last been on a football field. You know, it's uh, it feels a lot um, a lot closer every time I'm back here, right? It's like I can I can see you know plays that that took place and I can picture things that happened. But you know, as as you get more time away from the game, it, it's uh, it's more nostalgic to look back and reminisce and talk to the guys and. And he say, hey, you remember that game where we we did this, or, or remember that play where this happened? And coming back here, I'm like a, a dog seeing a squirrel every time the ball goes in the air. I'm like, oh man, just let me let me get one chance to toss that thing around. It's it's a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's crazy how fast time goes and how how quickly um, things evolve and how how two years becomes five years becomes now almost ten. Um, but hey, you know things. The world doesn't stop just because we hang them up. So it's it's good to see that sustained success continue to uh, to, to be had here. Yeah, absolutely. Do you still get to follow the team a lot? Do you watch on a regular basis whenever you have time? I'm sure you're up to. Uh, you know, I I'm yeah. always checking in. I don't get to see every game. Uh, I'm all every Saturday though. I'm I'm typically you know looking on my phone to see the live stats or or to see what's going on um, after kickoff and and through the st uh, status of a game, but. Uh, I try to to watch as much as I can. Probably see one or two games a year in person, 
and um, I'm, I'm here in Cleveland a lot doing a project for work, so it, it's nice to get back to campus. Um, you know, Coach Debs and I keep in touch regularly. He actually had me help recruit Drew because um, he knew he was going to be a good one, and it was really important to try to get him in here, and so I had an opportunity to build a little bit of a relationship with him over the winter and, and into the spring. Gate is in a quarterback now for St. Vincent, and it almost appears like they're, they're kind of shifting to a little bit more of an option offense here. With, again, starting quarterback Xavier Thompson, an injury in the first half out of the game now. So St. Uh, Vincent trailing 30 to nothing in this one after the Case Western Reserve punt. And a third and two coming up from the 33. Um, what exactly are you up to now? What are you doing now? How's your post-playing career yeah. been so far? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I've bounced around a little bit. I've been in Chicago um, going on five years now. Uh, I've been heavily involved in a number of uh, real estate development projects uh, over the past number of years and, and then uh, just recently was able to uh, to get something going here back in my hometown so we're uh, we, our group is working on, on a major project next to the west side market in ohio city and uh, we're hoping to break ground on that in the next 12 months or so and that'll be a large mixed use project right there at the hard corner of 25th and lorraine and we're excited to get it going very neat. As you see, Gatiss wrestled down there for the sack, and that's going to force another St. Vincent punt as Case Western Reserve's defense has been dominating today. And, you know, I know, I know you're not a defensive guy, Dan, mm -hmm. but you have to be impressed with what the defense here has done here as well today, yeah, too. Yeah, really holding dominating. that goose egg on the board is important. And, and as you get farther along in the game, even when you start bringing in second and third string guys to, uh, to get some minutes, Everybody's trying to keep that, that zero on the board. It's, a, it's a, a proud thing to be able to walk in there uh, to the locker room after the game's over and, and hold the shutout because it's, it's rare. It doesn't happen very often. So I know that uh, you know, these guys, especially the younger ones now coming on to get, to get reps late in the game, are, are looking to, to hold that zero. Absolutely. As Case Western's earned back at, reserve back out there, and it looks like the day for Drew Saxton may be done as Coolidge comes out for the second straight drive and certainly can't blame Coach Deblack for that, giving his quarterback – a little bit of a break after he's been red hot. And again, he has four more touchdowns today, no interceptions, 348 passing yards. Um, it is his third 300-yard game through six games this season. Is the first pass to Cole Morgan. He's not done yet. Makes the catch, goes past the 40, past the 45, up to the 46-yard line. And for Morgan on the day now, that's 13 catches for over 220 yards, and if I'm not mistaken, that is a school record for Sounds like one yards. to me, if I could recall. I believe the previous record was 219. Right about so. 200 and, yeah, right in the mid-teens there is what I re recollect. So C Colt Morgan, he might hold a lot of school records by the Goodness, time he's done. Yeah, he's uh, lighting it up. So Coolidge getting in on the action here now. We have three minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Coolidge drops back to pass near side, almost picked off as he's looking for Robina on the play. Getting a hand on that was Cameron Mack. And that one he might have still been running had he caught. Yes. So. He had a lot of green space in front of him there. Well... Again, it's always nice to have you guys back for these games. I know I speak on behalf of the university when I say we're always happy to have you here and be able to get you here for a homecoming and happy to recognize you guys tonight as well. And um, so that one, another one to Cole Morgan. He escapes a tackle, will go up the sideline before he's pushed out of bounds. And he's now one reception shy of the school's single game record as well. Pretty good day. That, that actually may be the reason Debs is leaving him in here to try to get him the shot at that record, which is uh, pretty exciting stuff. I mean, you don't get opportunities to break. Some of these records have been there. I don't know how long, but, uh, you know, kudos to these guys for being able to put up such incredible stats, and we're not even <clears throat> two-thirds of the way through the season yet. Is that something that's ever on your mind during the course of a game, whether or not, you know, you're close to a record? I mean, I would imagine you know when you're having a good day, but do you know when you're getting close to certain numbers? That's actually the way I describe it. You know when you're when you're on. You don't really know. I mean, we don't have any score sheets down there. We don't have any running live stats in our in our uh, in in between plays or anything. So, <laughs> but you know, you kind of have a feeling when you're clicking uh, and you can't miss and, and things are going well. And uh, I would imagine on a day like today with 15 catches, 230-ish yards, that uh, you probably get a sense that uh, it's, it's not too many days that they come along like that. You have a feeling that the ball's been in your hand a few times by the time it's all said oh, and yeah. done. 
Well, again, if he keeps doing this, it's kind of a normal day for him right now. 13 and 190 last week. Jeez. So he is uh, he's something else. They're going to him here. <laughs> and he has it. Turns around, makes the catch, pauses, jumps, and pulls it in. And boy, oh boy, I believe that is the record-tying 15th reception of the game. And he went up and got it, too. That was a ball where quarterback you know, put it up there and let him go make a play on it and tiptoeing along the sideline was able to go up and beat the defender and snag it. When, when I make this comparison, I'm certainly cognizant of the different talent levels, mm -hmm. in the, but he reminds me a little bit of the way he plays the game of almost like a Randy Moss. <laughs> he has that, that height, but also the speed and the hand ability to, yeah. to kind of yeah, he's athletic. make plays. He's athletic, and as a quarterback, nothing better than when you throw a ball up in the air and it's – it's really a 50-50 ball, and you, you expect your guy to go up and make the play and outcompete the defender, and that's exactly the type of thing where, you know, as season goes on, you need to have confidence in, in your guys on, on balls that, um, you know, quite frankly, that the defender can make a play on too. And, and when you can see him go up and, and snag it out of the air like that, it sets up nicely for, uh, you know, times later in the season when you're in a tight game and you need to, to make a play and, and throw it up, and you can have confidence in your receiver to go do exactly what he was just doing. Yep. Sam, Sam Jenkins just taken down there for a loss. Case Western Reserve, I believe a perfect two of two in the red zone today. And they'll have another opportunity to extend their red zone streak here. They are, if I'm not mistaken, perfect on the year in the red zone. Time ticking down at the end of the third quarter here. Coolidge up the middle. He'll go for the run. Finds a hole past the goal line. Touchdown, Coolidge. His third rushing touchdown of the season, and that will make it 36 to nothing, Case Western Reserve with the lead. Well, it's been that kind of a day for Case Western Reserve, and after a slow start for the offense, they have picked it up big time here, and now Albrecht back out trying to add on. Well, again, when it rains, it pours, and for the Spartans, it's raining hard today, and in a good way, I guess, is, is the way to put it, but Albrecht will send that one through the uprights. And it's now 37 to it's nothing. It's a little slippery in the first quarter, but I, after they worked out some of those kinks, it seems like they started to uh, to find a rhythm and uh, been able to get back to their old selves here, putting well close to 40 on the board through the third. And, and kind of talking a little bit about their game plan now, because it's a very different game plan than we saw from the team certainly last year with Rob mm -hmm. Cooden than we've seen in previous years, mm -hmm. but the way they're able to spread the field with receivers, the way they're able to attack both with the short pass and the long pass, mm -hmm. the, you know, that approach on a day like today where the field's a little bit wet, is that beneficial? Is that taken away? Because typically you don't want to throw the ball when it's wet, but, you know, the way they can kind of approach the game, it's, it's not necessarily the best strategy. Yeah, strategy you know, it's, it's, it's funny. When, when it's wet, you, you still want to be able to run your offense. You want to be able to, to have the weather not affect you too much one way or the other. And I, I think if you ask Coach Debelak, he – he loves throwing the football. You know, the last few years, they've, they've steered the offense to coach, coach's credit. He tailors the offense to what his quarterback strength are, strengths are, and Rob's strength was holding on to the football, and, and he's a tough runner and could create with his legs. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, now it's almost like they've kind of had to, to change things around because they have a guy that you just can't ignore how much talent he has throwing the football. And the fact that you have receivers – uh, that can go up and, and snag 13, 15 catches a game and, and, um, and, and compete for the football. It's just, you know, to, to, to that point, it's you want to always try to be in control of what you're doing on offense. And the best way to do that is, is to, to work hard Monday through Friday so that on Saturdays the weather is not impactful to you and, and you continue to do the things that, that you do well. That one return to the Case Western Reserve 31. And it'll be Gatiss back at quarterback once again for St. Vincent. One minute left here in the third quarter. As Case Western Reserve all over St. Vincent, 37 to nothing. Handoff comes to Stasco, and he's stopped in his tracks right about at the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard on it. And that will bring up a second down and nine with the clock ticking here. Well, probably at that point in the game where both teams are going to be content to Keep the ball on the ground, let things roll a little bit here as well. Yeah, at this point you try to get out, no injuries. You, you, you know, most of the starters are on the sidelines at this point. St. Vincent's probably just looking forward to hitting the showers, drying up, and getting on the bus, to be frank. So, um, but, you know, you want to get guys work who otherwise aren't getting a whole lot of work with the ones in the first half and, and really see what, what certain players are made of, uh, you know, for instances that 
there's going to come a, p a point later in the season where you're in a tight game. I mean, I would imagine last week was a lot like that where uh, guys are going to have to step in and make plays. Catch was made by Aaron Austin at the Case Western Reserve 39, one of the better passing plays we've seen today by the Bearcats, and I believe that will be the last play of the quarter. Let's see. Might get one more snap in here, three on the clock, and they do get one last snap in. Get us to run, and he takes it up the middle for a pickup of about eight, and that will end the third quarter. With the Spartans leading 37 to nothing. Dan, once again, we really appreciate you being here today. Thank you for Thanks stopping by the booth. I appreciate and congratulations it. again. I'm sure we'll get you again in oh, the yeah. next couple of years. Great here to be back. You and, you know, it's appreciate always, like I said, always great to be, be back on campus, especially for homecoming and, and big games and, and watching the success uh, of the team just continue forward. And looks like you guys got a good one in uh, Drew Saxon. So I'm excited oh. to watch him for the next four years. Well, I'm coming from someone who would know about a good one. So. Dan, thank you very much again. Appreciate it. That's Dan Whalen. We'll take a quick break. Be back with you in the fourth quarter. 37-0, Case Western Reserve with the lead. With 31 unique creations to choose from, there's something for everyone to love at Dave's Cosmic Subs. Meat lovers, vegetarians, and everyone in between agree that our freshly baked bread, high-quality ingredients, and homemade sauces make us the best in Cleveland. Come on into Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry to experience legendary subs in a cosmic atmosphere. And don't forget, we deliver. It's as easy as dialing 216-320-0330. Be the hit of the party. Order Dave's. We're back here at DeSanto Field, Case Western Reserve University. With a 37 to nothing lead, it'll be first and 10 from St. Vincent. Pardon me, second down for St. Vincent as... Gaddis with the run again. Gaddis moves to the outside. And is tackled about a yard short of the first down marker. And so they'll bring up third down and one from the 30. Will probably be the final numbers for both Cole Morgan. 15 receptions, 281 yards. That is by far a program record and three touchdowns. Drew Saxton, 348 yards passing, four touchdowns. Again, both those guys probably done for the day. Little option, Gatiss takes it forward and will carry for a first down down to the 25 yard line. Very different style out there with Gatiss in there. Again, it almost looks like an option offense here. So first down at the 25-yard line for St. Vincent. The Case Western Reserve defense shutting out St. Vincent so far through this one, but the Bearcats threatening here. Moving the ball early in the fourth quarter. Gatiss looks to the sideline. Now takes a deep breath, eight on the play clock. Five on the play clock. We'll have to hurry the snap, gets it off in time. Throws to the end zone. And it's knocked away. Nick Kavlesic on the coverage. So second and 10 coming up. Gatiss will check out of the game for St. Vincent and Navarro back in. This is Navarro looking to pass, and he's smothered. Sack in the backfield. Adam Poltrack pulled him down. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was Victor, Brian Victor with the sack. He has been all over the quarterback today. So that will bring up a third down and 13 from the 28-yard line. Got to imagine at this point, this will be four down territory for St. Vincent as they try to get on the board. Navarro still in a quarterback. Takes a snap, looks to pass, drops back. 
Looking to his left, throws and tackled well short of the sticks. Is the receiver Harding. It'll be a gain of four on the play and bring up a fourth down and nine. Well, the Spartans trying to preserve the goose egg. First fourth down attempt for either team today. Ten on the game clock, on the play clock, I should say. Snap comes. Navarro drops back, and he's sacked again. Cameron Brown, his second sack of the game. Correction for Brown, that, that was well shorting him. He now has four and a half sacks today. What a game for Cameron Brown. And Case Western Reserve will get the ball back on downs. Cameron Brown, just a beast. Tough to handle, and he gets the sack there. Four and a half sacks today for Brown. So the Spartans will get the ball back. Coolidge under center. And it looks like we'll get a false start here. So a huge day for Cameron Brown. A huge day for Cole Morgan. And a huge day for the Spartans, as you see. Defensive coordinator Warren Miller talking to his team. He's got to be happy today. Hand off to Stefanski, who has looked good in limited carries this year. Takes it forward for a gain of about four on the play. Bring up a second down and 11. The... Second string offensive line is in for Case Western Reserve. Coolidge tucks and runs on the design quarterback draw. Will carry forward up to the 38-yard line and set up a little bit more of a manageable third down, third and five. Well, the Spartans... Happy to keep this clock moving right now. Third and five from the 38. Coolidge takes the snap, he'll look to run again. And is stopped short. And the Spartans will be forced to punt here. So Chase Whitty, who is in the game is a wide receiver there. The ever popular wide receiver, kick returner, punter combination. He'll be back to punt here. Nowicki back to receive for the Bearcats. Snap comes. Witty's punt. Takes a hop at the 35, rolls all the way back, and a nice Spartan bounce there. Will roll inside the 20 before it stops at the 16. That's where Money Man Gwendy touches up with the ball. And that is where possession will begin for St. Vincent. Second team defense in for Case Western Reserve as well. Some new faces out there. Safeties now look to be Jeremy Hill and Jackson Mitchell. On the corners, it'll be Luke Bedell and Mangwendi. Run up the middle. Stasco carries forward, and he's finally wrestled down. Pickup of about three on the play. Bring up a second down and seven. Linebackers for Case Western Reserve. Brett Marcus, 
Alex Peltekian. Alec Peltekian is in. Dominic Barandica. I believe Josh Klopp on the outside. Throw from the quarterback over the middle. Nice tackle in the open field by the freshman Mitchell. The line is going to be Reed Gershenson, Dylan Zegers, and Adam Poltrack now for Case Western Reserve. This is Navarro. Throw to the near side. Pass caught by Kelp. Taken out of bounds after a gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. Second and two, they'll call it from the 38. Bearcats have done a better job moving the ball here their last two drives. That one sent long, and I think we're going to get a pass interference call. No. Nope. No pass interference. They might have said that ball was uncatchable. I'll bring up a third and two. Plenty of fans left in the stands here. Taking in another, what certainly appears to be, Case Western Reserve win. Nine on the play clock. Navarro will have to hurry. He gets it off with three left on the play clock. Hand off to Stasco, and he's held short. Tackle by Zegers. The defensive end comes off the line, makes the tackle, and the punt team will come out for St. Vincent. So the shutout looking more and more likely here. It would be the first shutout since Case Western Reserve shut out Illinois Wesleyan. First shutout for the Spartans since Case Western Reserve shut out Illinois Wesleyan in the playoffs last year. Remember that snow game they played? As the punt comes low, Rabina calls everyone off, moves out of the way. We'll let it stop inside the 20 before it's touched. As Case Western Reserve regains possession and might have a chance here with a couple of good games to put this game to bed. The last regular season shutout for Case Western Reserve came against Grove City on the second week of the 2016 season. They won that game 55 to nothing. New quarterback in, I believe Peter Hontis into the game. And we'll hand off to Stefanski, who carries it forward. Stefanski past the 20 to the 21 yard line. Hontis has seen some playing time this year in similar situations. Junior of New Orleans, Louisiana. Father was a quarterback at Tulane. He was inducted into that school's Hall of Fame. So D1 quarterback, good heritage there for Hontis. He'll look to throw here. Goes over the middle and the pass is caught. Making the grab on the play for the Spartans was Joe Dinko. First career catch for Dinko. Dinko, an interesting player. He's very fast. An extra man on the field for Case Western Reserve. So they'll make a substitution. 
Dinko comes off. Alex Glatz will get his first opportunity today. He checks into the game. Handoff goes to Stefanski. He's tackled before the line of scrimmage. Loss of two on the play. He'll bring up a second and 12. Clock still ticking, though. 5.42 to play in the game. Dinko back in. Austin Navarrete will also check into the game. Hontas. Letting time run off the clock. Four on the play clock. Takes the snap. He'll run up the middle with this one. Avoids two tackles and gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe a bit further up to the 40. So they'll bring up a third down and six. J.P. Wassman into the game. First time we've seen him today. Well, with this win, Case Western Reserve will improve to 5-1 and one on the season. And again, a good way to start their second half of the year. No more room for error left. And even then... A NCAA tournament bid will be in question. But certainly this team's only chance is to win out, and they took a big step to that here today, showing some nice bounce back after the loss last week to Washington and Jefferson. A lot to be proud of here for this team today. Jace Whitty back to punt on fourth and six. Clock continues to tick. They should have about 3.30 left by the time the pun comes. Witty sends that one away. Fair catch called for and made by Nowicki. And it will be at the 27-yard line to start the drive. So 37 nothing. Case Western Reserve leading. Band still playing. They have a lot to play for today. Good job by the band here on homecoming Saturday. St. Vincent back with possession. 3.32 to go. Handoff comes and swallowed up in the backfield is Stasco. That was Zegers again on the tackle. Zegers has played well so far today. And this is a chance if you're one of the reserves on this team, a chance to potentially earn a little bit more playing time, find your way into the lineup a little bit more. Stephen Clark into the game at cornerback here, number 45 at the bottom of your screen. Handoff once again, and not much to show for it there. Jatavia McLean with the rush. Corey King now comes in at cornerback for Case Western Reserve. So a lot of rotation here. 224 to play, 19 on the play clock. Quarterback keeper. Gatis hurdles the man, finally taken down, loses the football. The Spartans have it, but they will rule it down. And they will call that 
a first down. As we take another look, yeah, he was down. It looked like he just cleared the marker. So the clock stops after he goes out of bounds. Now starts up again on the first down. Snap comes. Cadis drops back. Throws. Ball bounces loose and... An incomplete pass with 1.32 to play. Tacoa Gatiss has seen a good handful of the snaps here in the second half. Again, the injury at the end of the first half to Xavion Thompson. Minute 32 remains now. Gatiss drops back. Looking to throw. Rolls to his right in the pass. Tip. Knocked down. That was Richard Phillips. The freshman who's seeing some time here. Again, a lot of new faces out there. So third and ten. Under ten seconds on the play clock. A minute twenty-six on the game clock. Gatus fakes one way, comes back the other way. He'll try to run for it here. And will dive for the first down. Give that young man some credit. He's played hard all game. And even with the score, well, not in stone, certainly the the result it appears as of now is. Let's take another look at that play. Dakota Gatiss. Watch him dive for the first down here. A little extra effort at the end. Got it. And a flag. Prior to the snap. False start. Offense number 14. Also, we have a sideline warning. Case Western. This is their first sideline warning. So we get both a false start and a warning on the Case Western Reserve sideline. Both at this point probably... Somewhat irrelevant with the game in check. First and 15 from the 48. Throw from Gatiss over the middle. Incomplete, no flag. Second and 15 coming up. Marsden, the intended receiver on that one. Well, after today, Case Western Reserve will hit the road for their next two games, their final two road games of the season. At Geneva on the 20th, at Bethany on the 27th. Next week against Geneva, a night game. Carry here by McLean, past the sticks for a first down. Geneva, always a tricky place to play, and always a tricky offense to play against. They run that. Triple option offense can cause headaches for the best of defenses. Run up the middle, inside the 40. Clock is ticking. Peltekian had the tackle on that one. Second and five from the 36. Under 30 seconds remain now. Gatiss being pressured from the pocket. He's going to look for the end zone. Throws it up. 
And the catch is made in the end zone, and it's a touchdown. Ball is caught by Zach Wisniewski. Pardon me, Wisniewski. And that will break up the shutout here. So a, a touchdown pass with 15 seconds remaining prevents the shutout. Now on to try to add on the extra point here will be Sam Elliott. And he does. So St. Vincent gets on the board with a touchdown with 15 seconds left. They avoid the shutout, but will take the loss here today. Both special teams units gathered around their coaches. We'll see if anything funny is going on here or if St. Vincent just decides to kick it away. Witty and Stefanski back to return for Case Western Reserve. So with 15 seconds remaining here at Case Western Reserve, it'll be another resounding homecoming win for the Spartans. Kick comes, picked up by Tarkovsky. Taken down just past the 35, and one knee should do it here. Nine seconds remain. Victory formation almost assuredly for Case Western Reserve. Hunt is in there, will have the honor of taking the knee. Everyone on the line ready, and that will do it. Case Western Reserve University with a 37-7 win over St. Vincent College. They ring in homecoming on a positive note.